that it was a true story that I hadn't heard about that I was like, wow, that's incredible. How have I not heard about it? Um, led by this man, Newt Knight, who I also had never heard about, who had such a clear identity of what was right and what was wrong. Um, couldn't ignore wrong, you know. This one quote that Gary said early on always stuck with me is that Newt was a guy that once his bell was rung, he couldn't unring it. And his bell wasn't unrung. He, d he didn't unring his bell even after he was buried. His bell kept ringing through his descendants, through his, his son and his grandsons. Um, the where he was buried, the defiance, um, the clear understanding of humanity that the guy, the man had. Damn, the, damn be the consequences. He never worried about the consequences. Never, he may have considered them, but he would never not right a wrong on behalf of the consequences being too tough. Didn't matter, didn't matter how small of a task and how great the consequences might be. He couldn't, he couldn't live with seeing somebody with an injustice or seeing somebody uh, um, not being treated fairly. I think Gary saw a piece of lost history here that was incredibly important and, and should be a part of our history and everyone should know about it. And he said the best way to share that as a filmmaker and a writer is to write that script and make that film. Um, it's something I think he had in his hip pocket. As he, yeah, he did for over a decade. And he knew it was not gonna be an easy one to get made. And uh, with the success of the first uh, Hunger Games, that helped him give him a little leverage to come be able to make this at the right time. I think he saw the right time to make it. And then uh, came to me, me coming on helped. Um, <clears throat> and then went forward to make it. But I think he said, <clears throat> this is a really important piece of American history. Nobody knows about it. It deserves to be shared, and I'm the man to share it. I think that's what he said. He ends up in the swamps and is taken in by this group of runaway slaves and is basically led by Moses. Um, they take him in. Um, Offer, Moses offers his bed. He says, I'll sleep on the ground. You know, and, and, and Newt's like, what the heck's that about, man? Um, I, I just got here. Um, Newt sees the collar around Moses' neck and it's just, he wakes up one night, he's just like, well, we, that's not right. No man should have that around his neck. You know, let me, let me get that off of you. Let me, I, I know how to get it off of you, but let me get it off of you. They, 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 they form a certain sort of bond and trust with each other. And it's very unspoken trust. They don't have to go, they don't go pat each other on the back and go, thanks for today. But they fight alongside each other. And uh, um, uh, not just during the war, but after the war as well. Um, and I think Newt, that would be Newt, if Newt had a, a best friend, somebody that he understood, that he knew had his back and he had his back it would be Moses through the story. Um, they became sort of brothers like that through through the story. That that would be the best way to, I think to to explain the relationship. More brothers than than even friends, yeah. Did you know that The Hateful Eight with three words is the longest title for a film directed by Quentin Tarantino? All the titles of his previous films only consisted of two words. For example, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, or Kill Bill. What's your favorite movie directed by Tarantino? Let me know in the comments below and click here for more cool videos. Thanks for watching. See ya!